Hello, everyone, and welcome to the first episode of our meetup series, An Evening With, that we are doing after the summer break. I'm Enrico from Avar Scoperta, and I'm very glad to see you here again today. This evening, we are hosting two special guests, two of the latest additions to our team of trainers. I'm talking about Cédric Ponte and Guy Fabien from Agile Partner. Hello. Hello. So um, this evening, we'll hear uh, stories of Agile from the Trenches, and we'll understand how Cédric and Guy have worked together with three very different company that wanted to start their Agile journey. Uh, of course, I have to mention that Cedric and Guy will be teaching an online workshop with us at the end of October, and this is called Agile Bootcamp. I will share the link in the YouTube chat as well later on. Uh, together with Cedric and Guy, we also have Enrico Teotti from Avans Coperta, who will be doing the visual scribing of this meetup. Hey, Enrico. Hello there. Hello. Uh, I will be sharing the link to the sketches as well in the YouTube chat. Now, so much talking about this YouTube chat. Of course, you can interact with us. So if you have any questions for us, uh, feel free to ask them in the chat that you should see uh, below the video. We'll stop every now and then to read them out loud so that this, inter uh, this meetup will be a bit more interactive. Uh, that's it for me. Over to you, Cedric Engi. Hello, everyone. So uh, my name is Cédric, and uh, I'm here with my colleague Guy. Hello, everyone. My name is Guy. And so, I am with <laughs> so I'm the talkative one, and Guy is the wise one. So I will be doing a lot of talking, and uh, Guy will, uh, will provide his wisdom along the way. Um, today, we have decided to, to share with you guys uh, some of our stories. Uh, so we, we call this, uh, this talk uh, Agile Stories from the Trenches, uh, because we've, we've been at, uh, at this thing called Agile for a while now. Uh, it's been more than 15 years for me, and uh, I think about uh, 10 years for Guy, you know, something like that. Yeah. So we've, we have plenty of stories to, uh, to talk about, but uh, today we are going to focus on three, three different uh, customers, uh, and you will see, uh, yeah, different aspects of Agile. Um, but first, we would like to start with a question to you, uh, which is, according to you, what are the main reasons that lead companies to adopt an Agile approach? So we have our, our guesses about that. We, have, uh, we are going to talk about uh, this when we talk about the stories, but uh, feel free to... Uh, to tell us about uh, what you think in the in the chat uh, in YouTube. So the main th thing that we want to start with is for you to understand that it's not about properly implementing Scrum or Kanban. Some people, they, they think it's about that. What we think is that it's all about delivering value uh, to your customers. And therefore, we, uh, we will uh, try uh, in, the, in these three different stories to, to give you the, the, really the view on this, this, uh, this uh, value delivery that, that, we, that we provided to the customer. And not just focus on the how and uh, what we implemented, but really the why. Uh, we, yeah, I don't know if you're aware of this. Uh, there is this uh, this uh, report that is called the Agile uh, State of Agile report, which is produced by uh, every every year uh, by a, a software provider. I will not say the name, but they've been at it for for 14 years, and uh, these are the main reason why uh, some uh, people who responded to this uh, this. Uh, uh, questions uh, say that, that the, the benefits that they, uh, they find in Agile. So the main one is uh, ability to manage changing priorities, uh, uh, project visibility, business and IT alignment, uh, delivery speed and time to market. And while we go through the stories, we will also 
see how these uh, benefits uh, are, are, are were linked to, to the stories that we are going to, uh, to tell you. We also have one answer, Cedric, uh, yep. from Stefano. Thanks, Stefano, for interacting with us. And that's to improve speed of development. Yeah, which I so see is one of this is the, the, well. the one that is uh, quoted in the, as the fourth one in that list. So indeed, uh, sometimes um, people want to uh, start an agile transformation or implement agile in a team because they want to uh, increase speed. But that's not the only uh, reason why we want probably to go towards more agility. So that being said, let's start with the first story. So once upon a time in a small European country called Luxembourg, there was a life insurance company who needed to modernize their contract management system. According to the management uh, of that company, uh, their legacy, si legacy system was working fine. Uh, it, was, it had all the right features and it was uh, covering all the, the necessary business processes, but they had trouble maintaining it uh, because it was uh, in, developed in aging technologies, VP6. Uh, so what they, they really wanted was to, uh, to migrate uh, that, that uh, system into something more modern technologies and uh, something that was more maintainable. Uh, they had already had two attempts at that. Uh, they had two uh, software companies that helped them but uh, these two attempts failed miserably uh, for some reason. Uh, they had spent quite a lot of money and time uh, in those two attempts. And uh, the IT department was starting to look very, very bad because they had nothing to show for themselves, nothing, no results to show. And of course, the business was uh, getting really, really, really pissed off. And of course, they also had, uh, well, they, they, they needed to, uh, to run their businesses. And uh, the, the old software was getting more and more difficult to maintain, as I mentioned. So fortunately, they called the uh, Agile Partner and uh, we came to the rescue. Uh, we started talking with them and, and we, we proposed, of course, uh, to, uh, to start with an Agile approach to address this, uh, this migration. And uh, instead of, uh, well, trying to do everything at once, we just proposed to work on a minimal viable product uh, that would focus on one specific part of the process. And uh, we promised that we would deliver working software within three months, otherwise they could fire us. So it was uh, a quite risky move for us, but uh, in the end, everything went fine. And we'll talk about that. So they agreed uh, to, to trust us with, uh, with this approach. So at that point, we did something crazy. We, we just went and talked directly to the business people. And uh, we didn't talk to the management. We, we directly went to the people who are actually using the software. And that's when we realized that uh, the one part of the business process was completely missing from, from the existing legacy software. And that part was the, the proposal phase. So before you, you manage the contracts, you have all this uh, uh, relation with the customer uh, proposing different, uh, different uh, kind of, of uh, services uh, and contracts that you, you, can, uh, you can provide. And this part was missing. So that's why we decided to focus the MVP on that part of the process. Uh, because that process was manual process so far. Uh, it was very poorly formalized and uh, it required a lot of uh, time for, from a lot of different uh, people uh, in, in the company. And uh, the, the, the interaction between these people was, was really not easy because uh, they were not aware when someone had finished something and these kind of things. Uh, by the way, that would have been a perfect candidate for uh, uh, event storming. But at the time, it was quite some time ago, uh, we didn't know event storming. So um, I said it before, and I will repeat it. There is no such thing as an ISO functional migration. Uh, I, I think it's a myth. 
and that myth should be killed forever. Uh, there is always, always, always an opportunity to uh, adapt. And basically, that's what we, we did. We, uh, we leveraged this opportunity to adapt the software to the way the business was actually working uh, and not the opposite. So uh, the, the MVP was uh, on, on something new. And uh, this new part uh, that we, uh, we delivered, and when I say we, uh, we had uh, Agile coaching, which is working with the team, but also developers from Agile Partner who were working with, uh, with some developers from the customer, so with a kind of hybrid team. Uh, that's that's one of the, the way we prefer to work with customers. And um, so we delivered this, this first, uh, first part of the proce process, which uh, is the proposal process, and we integrated with the legacy software. So instead of saying, okay, this is going to be the new software and it will live uh, on its side and, and uh, the legacy software will live on its side, then we integrated both of them. So the process was basically complete and they could uh, continue to run their business as usual with this new part of the, of the process implemented. And then uh, we started uh, implementing the next uh, part of the process and slowly uh, uh, decommissioning the features from the legacy software uh, once they had been implemented in, uh, in the, the new software. But it was not just the commissioning uh, functionalities and, and, and uh, uh, just blindly reproduce, reproducing them in the, in the new software. Each time there was a discussion with the business people to see how to improve and how to make this, this process uh, better fitted to, to what they were actually doing. And this was brand new for the customer. They, they, they had no, uh, they had never worked like that before. Uh, they were used to the kind of uh, uh, companies that would uh, have a, a requirement a document sent to them. And then the team would uh, deliver the software at the end. And obviously it would not uh, fit uh, the needs because uh, so many things happen. And we know uh, that well, things are changing and uh, it's by going to talk to the business people on a regular basis that you actually implement uh, something that, that really uh, fits the, the, the need in the best way. So uh, in terms of um, uh, architecture, we, uh, we used uh, some uh, a DGD approach, domain-driven design approach, and uh, the architecture was based on, on CQRS. So it really enabled this, this, this uh, kind of uh, uh, coexistence of, of both systems at the same time, and it is uh, the, the integration uh, of, of the two systems. So any questions so far? Uh, let me just open the, the window. Not yet. But, Not yet. Uh, let's carry on. I'm sure something will happen. Okay. So in terms of timeline, as I mentioned, the first MVP was delivered in three months. And then we had regular releases, like two, three months. Uh, and then uh, after like six prints or something like that, we would, uh, we would deliver in production the, the new software and decommission the, the, the old, uh, the legacy software. So in, in terms of uh, speed, because we were talking about speed, Definitely, it was a lot faster to deliver than what they were used to. Uh, the team was pretty productive in, the, in that way. So uh, in terms of the benefits that we just uh, talked about, uh, well, obviously, the ability to manage changing priorities, uh, we, we just demonstrated that. Uh, there was a, a, a part of the process that was completely missing, and nobody had any clue about that. And instead of just focusing on, on the, what was existing, we changed completely these priorities. And along the rest of the, of the life cycle of that, that, uh, that product, uh, we changed a lot, a lot of, uh, of priorities because uh, yeah, obviously uh, it's, uh, life insurance is a highly regulated environment and, and uh, there were changes in regulation 
and the market was evolving. So we really adapted to, uh, to what the customer expected. Uh, in terms of uh, the project visibility, as mentioned, uh, we delivered a release every two, three months. So there was a, a good forecasting of, of uh, what was uh, being delivered. Uh, the, 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 the two other uh, software company, uh, they, they really couldn't deliver anything. So the customer was really happy to see something and see something not just in test, but in production. Uh, in terms of uh, business and IT alignment, as, uh, as I mentioned, uh, they, they were really not used to working that way. And the, the business people, uh, they were really, really uh, happy to be involved in the, in, in the process of, of, uh, of uh, developing this new software because they could really tell what they really needed and not what the managers, uh, what their, their, their leadership was uh, thinking that they needed, but really what they needed because these people were the best people to know how to, uh, what, what they needed and how to implement these, these uh, business processes. Um, the, the development was driven by, uh, by the business through the, the product owner. And there were a lot of conversation happening uh, and really they enjoyed a lot of that. Uh, in terms of costs, uh, they probably saved quite some money by having this uh, new uh, proposal system in place. Uh, and uh, uh, they, they had a, a return on investment because instead of uh, having the same thing uh, migrated, they really had something new that really saved them some money. Um, one other aspect that we wanted to mention was the, the fact that the team morale was, was pretty good, actually. Uh, the, the, the people who, had, uh, who were working on the legacy system were also part of the, of the team that worked on the, on the new system. So they could see the new technologies and they could be, we, the rest of the team could benefit from their, their experience in the legacy system. And of course, uh, to remove or to decommission the, the, the features from the legacy system, it was very useful to have people who were used to, to that, that, uh, that system and knew how it was working. So uh, the, the team was really cohesive and it was cross-functional and it was uh, self-organized. So it was all in all quite a, a, a good experience for the team. They, they were, there was a bit of conflict uh, between people when uh, when we started the project, uh, and uh, in the end, that 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 uh, that conflict kind of disappeared because uh, people were were happy to be involved in in this new uh, in this uh, new project and and uh, happy to uh, to see something happening finally for IT uh, and to deliver some some quality software to the to the business. So in terms of uh, productivity, yes, the productivity was increased in terms of uh, reduction of risk because we were uh, delivering on a regular basis. Uh, the business was, uh, was uh, yeah, more, more uh, eager to, 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 take, to, take, uh, to trust us and to, uh, to take some, some risk. Uh, we provided some predictability on the, on the on the whole thing and we really managed to uh, offer new services that were not uh, not there before so Guy, do you have anything you want to add did i forget anything no for the time being no i think that if there is now some question it could be interesting to know them and to know and to answer and to give some answer so, do we have some questions? Uh, not yet, but uh, let's hope with the next story, which is about to start, we get some. So, thanks for this first uh, insight into your agile stories from the trenches. You're welcome. So, uh, by the way, this this uh, this story, uh, I think, was. Uh, it started in 2011, 2012, something like that. 
uh, and uh, as far as I know, we are not working with this customer anymore. But uh, one one of the person who was working for Agile Partner actually uh, left left the company and, and went to work for that customer, and is uh, the head of IT now uh, there. And uh, and I, as far as I know, this this uh, product is still in production, and uh, they managed to uh, to completely decommission the old the, the legacy system, and they are yeah still maintaining this uh, this system so it's been like eight nine years and it's still uh, it's still being worked on so okay so if there are no uh, questions on this then let's move to the next story right we right. do have one Surprise. yeah we have a question oh cool anna maria thanks for uh joining us and for the question. So I'll read it out loud. Yes. Anna Maria says, maybe I missed something. How did you manage to have your proposal accepted by the management? The development organization... Okay, wait. Uh, the development of the new feature instead of the migration. I hope I got it right. Okay, so how did we convince the, the, the management that this was the right way? Yes. Uh, that's a good question. Did so you did you actually propose to do the new feature instead of the migration itself? No, what, what we did is that um, when we start to discuss with a, with a customer, the, the purpose was to say, okay, first, because you failed two times by uh, trying to develop the, or to migrate the, the, the system to a new one, we just say, okay, we know that we could uh, provide you with a new way of doing things, but because we do not have, have the habit to work together, so we know that we need to, um, to get trust. And, and, and for that, we just start to say, okay, now we'll just start with the first phases, which is an MVP phase. And the objective was to say, OK, let's start with something which is small. Start with that and see how it would work. And after that, uh, you will see if we can go uh, forward or if we could uh, uh, find another way to, to, to work and, and, and if, if it will provide you with a benefit, with an expected benefit, if the first steps. So it basically it was a huge bargain, like, like just uh, trust us for three months, see if we deliver, if we deliver, we continue, if we don't deliver, then bye bye. And, and you have lost maybe three months worth of, of, uh, of money, but that's it. And the team was pretty small at that time so it was really uh, the, the, the way we presented that to them was uh, trust us for three months. And uh, if we don't deliver, then OK, we, it's our mistake. Uh, otherwise, you will get something. And if you are happy with what you have, either you just uh, say, OK, we're happy with what we have, but uh, we are not going to go further. Or we say, you say, OK, let's go further. And, uh, and that's what happened. So it was really by, we had no idea that uh, this, this uh, proposal uh, part of the, of the business process was not implemented in the legacy software. And we discovered that uh, once we had convinced them to, 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 to trust us. And once we had discovered that, we just went to the management and said, okay, uh, in to, 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 to realize this first MVP, we have two choices. Either we start with the contract part that you already know and that you already have in your legacy system, or we start with the proposal part, which is brand new, that, is, uh, that does not exist anywhere and that is really uh, painful for, for the business people at the moment. And they said, yeah, okay, let's, let's go for the proposal and see, uh, see how we, we can benefit from this new part of the software that would integrate with the, the legacy system. And that's 
that's what happened. And then the magic was basically how to make that happen in terms of uh, integration. And, and so there was some nasty database uh, copy of data and this kind of stuff. But that's that's the that's the technical side of things. Awesome. Thank you. All right. So shall we move on to the next story? Let's do that. And in okay. case, of course, we have other breaks and uh, we can read the questions. Yeah. Okay. Don't, don't hesitate to, uh, to let me know if there are questions. We are happy to take them in the process. It's uh, more interactive that way. Fantastic. Thanks. OK, so next story. We'll talk about still in the cloud. So once upon a time in a small European country called Luxembourg, there was uh, the headquarters of a worldwide industrial company who produced stainless steel. Uh, out of their plants, uh, plants that were based in France and Belgium and Italy and Luxembourg and also in Brazil, South America, uh, they produced coils uh, of uh, 24 tons of stainless steel. The, the coils that the coil that you see on the screen is the kind of thing that uh, that this company produces. Uh, and they also produce stainless steel bars. So from that, those coils, they can cut it uh, to make smaller coils. They can also uh, flatten it to make bars and plates and uh, also semi-manufactured uh, products uh, that would be sold to their customers. And their, their customers uh, were from other industries uh, like uh, cars, uh, producer, uh, household appliances, uh, elevators, uh, and, and many other things like that. But mainly what they, 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 they provide to other businesses, not, not directly to, uh, to, uh, to the customer or to the, the individual people. Um, back then, uh, the, this, uh, this heavy and pretty traditional industry, uh, they had to face a, a major challenge uh, that were, was coming from the East. Uh, the, the competition with Asia was fierce, and uh, China, for example, uh, produced more at a lower cost. cost and uh, they started to uh, they, they had raised the bar, uh, and they started to have the same uh, quality level that, than European companies. So it, it was a very big challenge for for this company to uh, to cope with that uh, because. The, the China is, is much, much bigger than, than, uh, than uh, European countries. And they, they could produce really a lot. What was saving uh, the European companies was the, the time it took uh, to carry the, 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 the coils from, from Asia to Europe. So this delivery time, uh, the distance, and some uh, regulations, uh, some protections from the European Union uh, in, in terms of taxes and things like that was the main reason why the market was still, uh, was still uh, good for, for the European companies and, and this company in particular. But uh, they were really uh, feeling the heat fr from, from the East. So the CEO of the, of the company, uh, he knew that, that something had to be done, uh, otherwise the company would uh, either be in, in very big trouble, and they would have to uh, to uh, yeah to 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 lay some people off, or then they would or even completely disappear. They, it was a, a kind of life of or death uh, uh, story. And the, the the CEO said, "We have about five years to to change our business, otherwise we are pretty much dead." Uh, so they had to do something, uh, and his idea was simple. The first thing, uh, to keep their customer and to uh, attract new ones, they needed to offer better services uh, than uh, their Asian competitors. Uh, to get closer to the, to, the, to the customers, to know the customers better, and to really provide uh, uh, a better uh, customer relationship than, than Asian companies. And the second thing was uh, they needed to reduce the, 
the delivery time. So the industry average uh, was between six and eight weeks uh, in Europe uh, to deliver this, this kind of huge coil of, uh, of uh, stainless steel. Uh, and the idea of the of the CEO was to reduce that time from eight weeks to 48 hours. Uh, can you imagine the, the logistical challenge that uh, this can be uh, behind the scene? So uh, basically what the, the, they wanted to become the Amazon of stainless steel, uh, but they had no idea where to start. Uh, and they, they, they had some developers uh, internally, but they were mainly maintaining smaller applications they didn't have any idea how to uh, to create uh, or to develop uh, uh, an online platform uh, where they could have a, a shop for their customer to uh, to come and to buy uh, their products. So, to summarize the challenges, they needed to decrease the administrative time, uh, administrative costs. Sorry. Uh, when responding to commercial requests, because at that point, uh, the customer would just take take uh, their phone, ring the the sales uh, the sales agent, uh, on uh, and and just ask for a quote for this this and that product, and then the sales agent would just uh, uh, prepare the quote, uh, send the quote by email, and then the customer would reply, and then. Uh, the, the supply chain would either start uh, uh, delivering uh, the stock uh, that they add to the customer, or they would need to produce uh, new uh, new coils to to f to uh, fulfill this uh, this request. So it was a very long process, and it was really uh, uh, not cost effective. Uh, they needed to uh, increase the efficiency of the sales process, and that that would also uh, doing so would free up some time for the the, the sales agents to to uh, to get closer and to know their their customer better instead of just uh, doing uh, work that could be automated, for example. So uh, when we got in touch uh, with them, uh, we started to. Uh, yeah, to 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 run some workshops to to try to uh, scope what they what they wanted to do, and uh, we realized that uh, the motto was time to market and user experience, uh, and we say okay for that we really need to uh, to uh, to think about delivering something fast, but also uh, be ready to scale for the future because. Uh, what they, they they had something like possibly twenty thousand customers. Uh, that would mean uh, a lot of concurrent users on the platform, possibly. Uh, but of course, we decided to go towards uh, again uh, an MVP that would uh, be delivered and and uh, show that first it was feasible, and second uh, that we were able to to deliver something usable in production. Uh, so the the workshop allowed us to to really uh, figure out if it, the scope of of the of this first MVP, and uh, and uh, choose some some technologies, and also uh, start uh, envisioning the the architecture. So we decided to go to, towards the cloud. We we did the development on Azure, uh, and uh, we implemented. Uh, uh, an agile process. So this first, this first workshop really uh, was the beginning of the relationship with the customer, and that's where we won the trust of the customer. And from from these workshops, we decided to uh, to create uh, an hybrid team. And as I mentioned, they had the developers internally, but uh, only two of them uh, that were used to work uh, individually on on their own uh, application and uh, in, in, uh, in other kind of technologies. So we said, okay, let's set up an hybrid team. Uh, we will pick some technologies that uh, will uh, allow us to, to, uh, to, uh, to have this uh, uh, fast rhythm, but also to deliver fast, 
but also uh, that will uh, we didn't want to have uh, developers from uh, agile partner side that would uh, be expert in the technology and developers from from the customer side that would be newbies and and that would be a bit lost so we decided to go for technologies that were uh, kind of new so uh, at that point, uh, Angular 2 was uh, starting, so we went for Angular 2. Uh, it was not even officially released, it was a uh, uh, release candidate. We went for Node, uh, Node.js, and TypeScript, and NoSQL. So there, there were some technical uh, challenges that uh, in cutting edge te technologies that, that uh, we decided, and we agreed with the customer to take that risk. Uh, we said, this is, a, this is a, a to lay the ground of, of sub, the, the future of this platform. Uh, and we think that these are the, the good tools to start with. And uh, the first uh, MVP, that was basically a, a, a simple uh, shop uh, with, uh, with presenting all the products that were in stock. So uh, all the back office systems, they had this, uh, this uh, uh, stock uh, that were recorded in this back office system. So this stock would be sent from the back office system into this new platform. Uh, and then the shop would present the different kind of products uh, with the stock that, that was available. And the customers could come. And uh, of course, it's a B2B uh, platform. So they, not everybody could just come and order a coil of uh, 24 tons of uh, stainless steel. Um, but they, they could come on the platform and, and just say, okay, I want this, 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 and that. And at the end, basically validate your shopping cart like, like you do on Amazon when you buy your stuff for yourself, but uh, with uh, stainless steel products. Uh, and this was the first MVP. And uh, this MVP was ready again in th three, four months. Uh, we started in uh, April. I think, uh, and uh, basically in the uh, beginning of July, the, the most of it was in production. Uh, then during the summer, we spent a bit of time on the kind of administration uh, uh, UI that to, to create the users and things like that. And in September, it was really ready for, for the salespeople to start advertising uh, to, the, to their, their different uh, customers. And I think the first uh, order was placed uh, in early October, something like that, uh, by one of their big uh, customer in Germany. And one way that we managed to reduce complexity uh, was to target, because yeah, there, there are different, uh, they were organized, uh, the sales were organized uh, with different countries, like, some salespeople would take care of the German market. Some other salespeople would take care of the French market. Uh, then other people would take care of the Italian market and so forth and so on. So the idea was really to split the work by having this, uh, let's first, ta first target the German market because it was one of the main markets. Uh, and then we will implement the shop for uh, France, then for Italy, then for another country. and. In that way, it was quite easy to, uh, again, to manage uh, changing priorities. Because, um, yeah, some, some countries uh, were eager to come to the shop uh, and some were a bit like laggers. And uh, so we, we actually uh, uh, were able to say, okay, you uh, are almost ready to uh, to open uh, the, the shop for your customers. So let's put you uh, before these other people who uh, who need more work uh, to 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 be ready, and we were really able to change those uh, the the ordering of things. And uh, one other thing that was uh, really uh, that happened that we had no idea beforehand uh, is that the the production of stainless steel depends a lot on the 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 stock market uh, for uh, chrome uh, because it's one of the main uh, component of, of stainless steel. And uh, in August, uh, around uh, July, August uh, that year, the, the stock uh, market, uh, there was a big fluctuation for, for Chrome in, uh, in the stock market. 
And because of that, their stock uh, was sold very, very fast. So all around the world, the, all the stock of that company that they had was sold very, very, very fast because of this uh, fluctuation of the Chrome price. And therefore, if you have a nice shop uh, where you can buy stuff, but there's no stock, obviously it's not very useful. So at that point in time, uh, there was a roadmap for, for, for the, the, the future releases. And it was decided to completely uh, review this roadmap and to start uh, working on uh, something completely different that should have come in uh, maybe six months or a year later, uh, which was the, the second, uh, second choice. Uh, so when they produce uh, uh, the, the steel, sometimes they have uh, either when, when, when they cut these big coils in, the, they have smaller coils that they don't manage to sell. So they have some kind of a leftover inventory, uh, or they have also second choice, like something that with defects, small defects and things like that. Uh, and this, they, 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 they sell with a bidding mechanism. So at that point in time, there was, it was decided to actually put an emphasis on this uh, second choice, instead of opening more shops to sell, uh, to sell the, the, the stock, because they didn't have any. Uh, and then the project went on and on, and uh, uh, after that, there was a release for uh, the sales on production. Uh, so uh, you don't even have stock yet, but uh, the customers could just uh, pick from all the products. And, and uh, once uh, it was, uh, they, they, they would buy the, the, some products, uh, the supply chain would, uh, would uh, be triggered and the production would start and it would be delivered afterwards. So it, it was a very interesting project to work on. And we really, really, uh, I think, changed the way uh, the salespeople were seeing their own job. Like they shifted from a kind of administrative work to something that was more like working on the relationship with the customer. So it made a big difference. Uh, I don't know if there are questions yet. Uh, no, not yet. So either people, uh, I'm being crystal clear, or people are getting bored. That's the, <laughs> I don't Very know which one so is. Far. I hope it's clear uh, and that people are not getting bored. So yeah, in terms of uh, ability to uh, manage changing priorities, uh, as I mentioned, we, uh, we, we changed a lot of priorities along the way. Uh, in terms of uh, project visibility and predictability, uh, we, we set up a governance with uh, with the the the, the program manager uh, that was in charge of the whole program because this platform was part of a larger program that that was a, a major change program for the the whole organization. Uh, so we defined uh, uh, OKRs and uh, so objective uh, key results and and uh, we just. Uh, provided this information. The CEO was involved on a regular basis and was even uh, participating to, the, to the, 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 the review meetings sometimes. Uh, uh, he invited the whole team uh, for, for dinner uh, in a nice restaurant in Luxembourg. Uh, and, and he really uh, stressed out how important that, 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 uh, that new platform was uh, for the survival of the, of the organization. Uh, in terms of IT and business alignment, uh, of course, as I mentioned, we uh, that the sales uh, really uh, changed the perspective on, on their work and, and it really opened a lot of new doors for them. Uh, by the way, it was the, the first time that this organization had all of their uh, different uh, uh, orders in one central place because uh, they, they had a lot of different uh, back office systems uh, because they had bought some other smaller companies and, and uh, the IT systems were not completely in the integrated. So uh, thanks to that new platform, uh, for the first time in the, in the history of that company, they had an overview of all the, the orders uh, of the, that, were, that, were, uh, well, that were there in their back office systems. Um, yeah, so uh, I think uh, 
that's pretty much everything I can say. Guy, do you have something you want to add? Yes, yes, there is one thing that uh, I think which is a, which was a, a key point for the success of this project. It was that we host the hybrid team within a agile partner premises. The objective was really to to help the the team to uh, be to get more and more familiar with agility and with the practice and also to be uh, to get some help with other people within agile partner who could uh, give some some advice and provide some some training or, or some workshop and it was really a, a key point uh, to be sure that uh, uh, the customer uh, employee get more and more familiar with agility and on the second time they could Uh, go back to uh, to uh, the client uh, premises, and, and and it was the second phase where they was also able to explain agility within the customer premises and within the customer company. Yeah, it it's a very traditional industry at first this this uh, this organization, but it was really surprising when we started working with them how how fast they understood. The, the the concept of, uh, of agile and and all this this notion of iterative work and incremental work and and they they were really uh, it was um, really impressive actually to see how how fast this this uh, governance uh, what was set it in a, in motion and and uh, the 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 work that uh, the the program manager and and other people working on the program did with the salespeople Uh, to manage the change was also very impressive. So we were not really involved in in that uh, in that part uh, because they, it was more like internal change. So uh, we were really more involved in the in the development of the software. But there was a lot of work uh, being done to to convince the salespeople that they would not lose anything by proposing the platform to uh, to their customers, but instead of that gain uh, a lot of uh, more free time and, and and they could change the relationship with their, their customer and yeah this this hybrid team that was in our premises really protected the team at some point uh, it, it allowed them to 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 focus on on what they had to do and to really uh, deliver this first mvp in in three to four months uh, and i'm pretty convinced that uh, it would have been much more difficult to do if uh, if the team had been at the customer premises because uh, the two developers who had by the way a lot of business knowledge uh, and who would share this business knowledge with uh, with the team uh, and the product owner who was uh, also uh, well very very knowledgeable of about the whole business uh, Uh, they would have been disturbed all the time by people coming to them and, and ask them questions and ask them to do something uh, on other systems that they would maintain in the past. So instead of having this kind of uh, disturbance all the time, it was really a, a, a very uh, good choice from from uh, from their side to really come to our premises, protect the team, and uh, It was really told internally that don't bother these three people because they, they are doing something that is very, very important at the moment. So don't go and disturb them. And because they were far from the, the headquarters, it helped a lot. Excellent. Do, do we have some questions? Not for the moment. Okay, then I will go for the crystal clear check. <laughs> Hopefully. All right. Shall we proceed and uh, move to Let's the smash third, it one? With the third one? Yeah, yes. Okay. So, uh, once upon a time in a small European country called Luxembourg, <laughs> there was, by the way, did we mention that Agile Partner is based in Luxembourg? Uh, so, there was a bank. Uh, yes, there are banks in Luxembourg, uh, a lot of them. But uh, this one was a, not just a bank, it was part of a big uh, banking group. 
uh, international uh, group and uh, the wealth management branch uh, uh, they wanted to make sure that their very rich customer uh, would stay with uh, with them and and keep and trusting them with uh, with their largest assets uh, so uh, in order to do that uh, they, they, they they launched an innovation initiative uh, based on on the lean startup approach uh, with design thinking and and, uh, and things like that uh, and this this program was launched uh, before we were uh, even involved uh, with that and out of this initiative uh, 70 ideas uh, came out uh, from the first workshops that that were done uh, and uh, 11 of these uh, ideas uh, were transformed into projects uh, that, that were selected. And uh, out of these 11 uh, projects, three were taken by Luxembourg, three were taken by Switzerland, uh, three were taken by Singapore. Do you see the common pattern between these three countries? Maybe you see. Uh, and two were taken by uh, Paris. Uh, and uh, we were of course involved in the projects that were uh, uh, in uh, hosted in luxembourg uh, and the three ideas uh, for luxembourg was to propose a new service with a, a digital vault so that the customer could uh, put all of their important uh, important documents in, in in this vault but also they could exchange documents where they with their relationship manager uh, and and remanage all of their uh, different uh, 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 projects and, and and businesses with with a, a very secure way of exchange, exchanging documents the second one was uh, to implement a biometric authentication so of course they had uh, access to a web banking system and all this kind of stuff uh, but uh, at that point, uh, they, they didn't have any biometric uh, uh, kind of uh, authentication. So the idea was really to, to uh, start enrolling the biometrics for, for their group of, of, uh, of uh, customer and, and then uh, give them the ability to use these biometrics to, uh, well, of course, log in into their, their system, but also uh, to uh, to uh, to acknowledge uh, when they were giving some some uh, some orders, uh, or they were asking their the relationship manager to do something, they could just sign with their biometrics to make sure that it was really them that were uh, giving the order. This kind of thing. And the third idea was to provide a, a financial portfolio aggregator. So most of these uh, very wealthy people. Uh, they have more than one bank usually. They don't invest everything in just one bank, but they invest some part of their wealth in one bank and some other parts in another bank or maybe an insurance company, uh, like the one we talked about in the in the first story. Um, but the thing is, the customer they don't have uh, an overview of everything that they have because each individual. Uh, bank or insurance company they provide some kind of uh, of reporting but they don't have something that aggregates all of all of it uh, all together to provide uh, an overview of all the, the asset portfolio so that was the third idea uh, the the way they approached this uh, this initiative uh, in in that uh, big uh, banking group was really really impressive uh, and again, I was surprised by by the the when we started with Guy on on that uh, mission that I was really surprised by the the amount of uh, of uh, investment they did for for this initiative. So in terms of money, for example, I, I think at the beginning they had uh, an envelope of, of twelve millions uh, for for these different projects, which is pretty big, uh, a pretty big investment. Even though it's big banking groups, still it's a, it's a pretty big uh, investment and I think they, they actually uh, invested more than that. Uh, in terms of people, uh, 
each project uh, was uh, driven by uh, what they call the pizza team from from the, the pizza team uh, the famous uh, uh, pizza team from Amazon. Uh, the pizza team was would contain six people with different skill sets. So one person was uh, the so-called product owner. Uh, that person would be really uh, uh, very knowledgeable about the business processes and and uh, and uh, the relationship with the customers and these kinds of, kind of things. One person would be the growth hacker. So uh, uh, how to um, make the 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 new service uh, uh, to advertise let's say to make it visible to measure the impact of the of the new service uh, among the, the the customers and this kind of thing uh, one was the swiss knife uh, basically someone who knew the, the the organization very well who knew a lot about compliance uh, and and security and rules and things like that uh, what was feasible or not feasible, and that would be able to uh, to really uh, 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 raise impediments uh, uh, much more quickly. Uh, one was the tech lead, uh, so it was someone who had some technical background. Uh, one was the user experience expert, and the last one was the so-called scrum master. I say so-called because they really. Uh, used uh, this agile uh, or scrum uh, role name but the the way the team was working was not really uh, exactly scrum so i would prefer to call that facilitator than the scrum master but uh, that's how they called it uh, in terms of uh, time investment uh, all of these people were dedicated uh, three times a day uh, three, three days a week sorry uh, three days a week uh, on the project and then the two other days of the week they would uh, go back to their business as usual uh, to handle the, the, the all the different other stuff that they, uh, they, they were doing but that means that uh, they had really a lot of time to uh, to to spend on the, on that and uh, in terms of logistics uh, the the offices they, they really uh, provided a large area uh, open open space with uh, new furniture uh, with a, uh, one corner for each uh, project and uh, with a common area where the the, the governance uh, was uh, was also set and uh, we used a lot of visual management uh, and and it was really uh, well they, they, they really did what what uh, needed to be done to uh, allow the people from the teams to be away from from their business as usual, from their own desks, and work together as a team for these three days that they, they, they were uh, they were working on the project. So it was really interesting to see that uh, in this kind of traditional and and very uh, very uh, highly regulated uh, organization to see how how much uh, they understood that it was important to have people co-located and, and uh, work together. So this whole thing was called the design factory and it was actually uh, advertised uh, to the, the, the board of the organization. And the, the, it was a bit funny at some point because uh, we really had the, the, somehow the feeling to, to be uh, under the spotlight and sometimes we would have uh, uh, board members go, go uh, go down and, and visit the, the, the design factory to see how it, things were happening and, and this kind of thing. So it was also a kind of communica internal communication on how things could be done in a different way. Um, regarding our role, uh, as I mentioned, they uh, asked us to be Scrum Masters, but uh, uh, after Understanding the context and and uh, and being involved in the in the beginning of the of the projects, we quickly understood with Guy uh, that that uh, a, just being the scrum master for the team was not enough. Uh, what we realized is that uh, the there was no IT. The IT department was not involved at all in this initiative. It was an initiative from wealth management, and they just say, okay, let's let's 
create some uh, proof of concepts and and uh, things that will uh, that we will advertise, uh, but uh, it will probably not go in production. And we say this is this is not right uh, because if you well, first you need to involve your customers in that in that uh, in that process because you cannot just create some new services, offer new services without involving your customers, asking uh, them if they think that this is interesting and ha receive their feedback and see how, if, if they would be ready to actually sign up for the new service. So our, our first thing was to really stress out that you need to involve the customer. And uh, so we, we uh, participated uh, to this, uh, the, the meetings with the customer and facilitate the conversation and, and this kind of thing. And because the customer would get involved, we couldn't sh just say, okay, this is a kind of a pet project uh, or a, a proof of concept. Uh, you will spend uh, some time to work with us. And actually customers were quite happy uh, to, to, uh, to, to work with the bank on that. But if we had said at the end, yeah, but this is just a, it will never really be released. It's just a pet uh, thing. It's just a POC. Uh, we are going to do that again later on or something like that. The, the, the impact on the, on the customer would, would have been very, very bad. So uh, we had to make them understand that they should really first involve the customers and second, really involve the IT department so that these projects were not just a proof of concept, but could really uh, be offered as a service to a group of uh, customers at first, but then generalized and maybe uh, also generalized, not just for the wealth management customer, but also for the rest of the bank uh, or the rest of the customers, like like uh, companies and and uh, and uh, like, uh, and uh, yeah, normal people who don't have that wealth that much wealth. Uh, so the 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 so-called Scrum Master roles really uh, expanded a lot. Uh, we spent quite a lot of time uh, making sure that the people were focusing, the people from the team were focusing on the decisions that they had taken. Um, it's very easy when you have uh, this kind of uh, uh, lean startup uh, design thinking approach to, uh, to have a lot of ideas flowing around and, and, and you jump from one thing to another. But uh, to keep this focus, to, to come back to, okay, we have taken a decision we need to work in that direction. Otherwise, we need to review the decision that was taken if it was not the right one, and we need to pivot and to change and to adapt. But uh, it's too easy to switch very, very fast from one thing to another and to lose focus and, and to then become completely uh, inefficient. So uh, that was uh, quite a big challenge for, for the teams. Um, so yeah, in terms of um, our role, uh, what what we brought to to this uh, to this initiative, we spent some time facilitating discussion with business people, uh, with people who know the the, the 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 internal processes of the bank, with customers, with the compliance, because uh, obviously, in a bank you need to go through compliance if you want to have something happen. Uh, with uh, security, uh, with IT, I already mentioned, but also with third parties like software providers uh, and uh, the, the CSSF. So it's CSSF in Luxembourg, it's the, the, the regulator, the banking re bank regulator, uh, the CNPD, which is the, the, the organization in charge of, uh, of privacy and, and, uh, and, uh, like GDPR and this kind of stuff. Uh, so there were a lot of different parties involved and we had to uh, really make sure that the, 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 the work of the team was, uh, was uh, focused and, and that things were happening in the right order and uh, that we were not forgetting anything. Uh, so for that, we used a lot of uh, tools that we had uh, already like, like uh, visual management, 
obviously retrospectives uh, to improve the, the process of the team and this, uh, this kind of stuff. We also uh, helped uh, the, the, the governance that was not done by uh, people from, from our side, uh, but uh, people from a, a big four company. Uh, we helped to sync the work again among the, amongst the, the three different projects. Uh, for example, when was, one customer was visiting for one project, make sure that the other projects were aware that that customer would come and that maybe they get a chance to talk to the customer as well. Uh, all these kind of, of small things that, that seem very, yeah, very small, but, but that make a whole lot difference in terms of efficiency and, and productivity of the team. Uh, and, and that's it. So in terms of ability to manage change, uh, and to manage changing priorities. That's pretty much everything we did all the time. Uh, like priorities were changing all the time uh, because uh, we were depend so much de depending on our third parties that would uh, give feedback and, and just the feedback they would provide would change the scope of the project potentially. Like customers would give feedback uh, and it would change something, but uh, then compliance would, would give feedback and something that you thought was possible was suddenly not possible anymore. So we had to, to figure out some, some, some workarounds or way around this. And uh, would that, if we shift this like that, can, can it be feasible then, uh, this, this kind of approach? Uh, and uh, yeah, so we were, uh, involved in three projects out of the three uh, uh, one was actually uh, is actually in production right now uh, the two others uh, they, they struggled a bit more uh, I think uh, Guillaume you can confirm that I think one is still being worked on the aggregator yeah so the the, the, the vault project is actually in production uh, we and it's being used by customers. Uh, the the biometric, I think, uh, I don't know. Maybe Guy, you can. Yes, the, yes. Biometric is is was using, and they decided because with the coming of biometric by um, uh, Apple, they decided to put on hold and to see how it could be possible to adapt the way they will deliver and they will use a biometric with uh, specific uh, services. And for, for the aggregator, they decided to also to put it in production and it is used also now. Uh, the only thing is that they decided to offer for a brand new uh, range of customer uh, and they they are working on on that to be sure that it will be possible to use for those new customers. And and uh, and what we can also say, uh, because uh, like Cedric said, there was a lot of noise about this new way of working. Uh, there was uh, people who, who came to this uh, design factory and request to have some some. Um, uh, help to facilitate workshop within the team. Also to, to have some uh, Q&A session to uh, answer some questions that they could have and they have based on how, how it could be possible to use such kind of, of uh, agile practice within the team. There was also some open doors session and, 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 and uh, really for, for different uh, departments like uh, salespeople, HR, legal. And it was really, really interesting to see that all those people was interested in, in that new way of, of working. So I think that's it for this third story. Are there any questions? Okay, not on the third story, mm -hmm. but we have a note that I didn't read before from Ana Maria who asked the question. And I think it 
can be a nice way to sum it up. Uh, because when you were answering the question about how did you basically convince uh, the first, the client of the first story, uh, you explained that it was a mix of trust plus doing this bet and delivering the MVP. Mm -hmm. Um, so her note is, so you really, actually, you proposed something that they didn't ask for, but they needed at their risk. And I know that yesterday we had a conversation with the yeah. two of you, and it, this was uh, one of the points that also connects to the beginning of the meetup, when you said, what is actually agile and why is it useful? Exactly. So... Um... What we see, because these are just three stories, uh, but we have many, many more. And, and mo most often uh, what we see is that uh, the, the people who want to start uh, implementing Agile or to start an Agile transformation, they, I wouldn't say that they do it for the wrong reasons. Uh, some they do, but uh, most of the time they have no idea of why they really do it. Uh, some they, they 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 just want and, and as we as we mentioned uh, some of the benefits are the, the just uh, being able to deliver faster and this kind of stuff but this is just a this is just a kind of a means toward the end the end is really to satisfy the customer the whole the overall idea of agile is really to satisfy the customer. That's the first principle of the Agile Manifesto, by the way, is to uh, uh, satisfy the customer on a regular basis by delivering software on a regular basis, sorry. So this is really what we want people uh, to, to take away is that uh, you should always try to uh, focus on what you don't see and maybe explore what you don't see. Uh, don't just uh, stay on the obvious and, uh, uh, well, I, for example, I have another quick, very quick story is that we uh, worked with a customer. They said, oh, we have a problem uh, when we deliver in production. We don't know how to uh, number of our patch that we release in production because we have the lot of patch and, and it's, it's getting hard to maintain to, to, uh, to, uh, to do. And the problem was not to patch the production system. The problem was a quality problem and, and that was before that. And the actual problem was to talk to the business people to understand better the, the, what had to be done and the needs of the people of the business. So people were focused on something, whereas what they needed was something completely different. So maybe we can ask the people uh, what they take away from, from these stories. Uh, that would be interesting to know. Yeah, we have one question actually from Stefano. Uh, who I think, uh, who says, all stories were very interesting, but all were talking about big companies. I'm wondering if agile and design thinking are worth the effort to learn and adapt even in a very small company. Um, so we, we also work with uh, startups, uh, or we used to. Uh, we, we are not working with any uh, at the moment, but... Uh, yeah, yeah, it's 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 definitely worth it. Uh, like, I don't know, the whole lean startup idea is really to uh, to uh, to start uh, just exploring the possibilities and to deliver something. Uh, like the the idea of MVP is actually something that is not even software. It's just interviewing people that might use your 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 product or, or your your service. Uh, to see if they are interested, if uh, if well, how much they would be ready to pay for that, uh, this kind of of idea is really to do something that is cheap enough so you don't uh, run a uh, invest a lot of money and a lot of time in doing something that is actually not going to be used. So uh, it's definitely definitely uh, interesting, I think, for small companies. Maybe Guy, you want to add something on that. Yes, and, and, and what we also did is that we work with team within the company who, who had a specific objective and the team was only four, five people and, and they, we work with them with the same way. I mean that 
of course, it was within a big company, but we were with small teams. And this is also one of the things which is uh, interesting to have in mind. And currently, we are working with a, 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 a SME company, which the objective, they have less than uh, 25 people. And the objective is really to know how they can benefit from agility to help them to uh, work on a better way when they would like to deliver some new product and services. And, and uh, so really like uh, Sedex said, it is possible to work with big company, uh, with small company. And one thing that we need to have in mind is that we could start with what, what we name a, a pilot project, because this helped to see how uh, the team or the, 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 the services or the department could benefit from, from, from the agility. And after that, to know how it could be possible to deploy on, on, on another way. So really, it is possible to start and to work with a small team, small company. To, to give you an example, at some point, uh, we, we have uh, something that at Agile Partner that is called the Software Factory. It's basically uh, uh, where this second project uh, that I'm, that we mentioned, uh, the stainless steel project, started in on the software company, uh, a software factory, sorry. Uh, at that moment, we had uh, one project that was uh, uh, where we worked for a big four company, a uh, big audit company, and at the same time, one project for a one person company. So a, a new startup where she was only one person. So it, and this, it was the same uh, kind of team that was this working with the same uh, principle and also exploring uh, like for this startup with one person, she, she had some ideas about uh, what she wanted to propose in her platform, but we challenged her a lot uh, we 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 told her okay you you uh, want to work with organization uh, that uh, that uh, uh, that are not only very hierarchical but but also that are more agile as well so uh, she she uh, she came to realize that uh, because we challenged her on her own ideas that uh, there were some opportunities some business new business opportunities that were. Uh, that were available for her. Uh, so that's the way we work. It's not only uh, just developing software. It's not just about coding. It's about figuring out uh, what makes more sense uh, for the end user, what delivers more value for the customer. And there are many, many different ways you can explore that. Uh, and the way you implement it afterwards is agile. Uh, you can do Scrum, you can do Kanban, you can do whatever you call it. Uh, the, 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 the core idea is really to uh, focus on the, the delivering value to the customer. Yeah, and one thing which is also important in that, okay, when you use such kind of framework, method, practices, is just a mean that will help you to reach the objective, which is deliver value. And this is really one point that uh, it is important to have in mind. It's really, first of all, when you talked about agility, it's first a, a, a mindset and all the different method practices, it's just something that will help you to develop this mindset. And of course, it is the reason why it works for every kind of organization, one person, a company, or bigger one. And to tell the truth, I, it, the agile mindset is applicable to almost everything. I did my uh, home rebuilding in an agile way. I did an incremented, in, incremental kitchen, for example, which is a uh, pretty tricky. I had three or four versions of my kitchen. So uh, you can use personal Kanban, for example, uh, to uh, 
prioritize your own work uh, and or your I, I know some agile coaches who uh, who uh, organize their their family in an agile way like like uh, for the uh, the uh, the, the chores uh, that have to be done uh, in the in the house, for example, all these kind of things that can be done. So, it's. Uh... I wonder what was the MVP of the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you don't you don't want to see it. <laughs> and and also personally, I, I work also for for a football team. And and uh, you know, with a football team, there is no IT. No such kind of things, and uh, really, the objective was to help them to reach the objective that they decided before uh, before to start the the, the, the tournament, and, and and they really helped them to 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 reach the objective, and and really, it worked in every area because it's first of all a mindset. Excellent. This is very new indeed, football and agile, but I'm sure it works. <laughs> so I have one last comment from uh, Johan, who says, starting with a value stream mapping can really help identify what Cedric was saying about not only focusing on the obvious. Well, Johan should know better because he, he's a former employee of Agile Partner. So. Well, then, I'm sure he was part of the stories as well. <laughs> yes, yes, he was involved at some point. Awesome. Hi, Johan, by the way. Okay. So, time to wrap up? Let's do this. Yeah. So, should I do it or do you want to do it? Okay, well... Thanks, Cedric and Guy. This was an excellent uh, meetup and conversation about these well, three interesting stories. Thanks for welcoming us. Thanks. Always a pleasure. And uh, we look forward to seeing you at the end of October online. Uh, we launched a couple of months ago the Agile Bootcamp, for which you can find tickets at the address that you see on the screen. I also shared the link to our website before. So you'll be able to browse that. Um, the video will be available um, on YouTube. So if you want to go back to any stories, uh, that's also possible. We will also include in the video description the link to uh, Enrico's uh, live sketching. Thanks for that, Theo. And uh, I guess that is it. So we'll see you actually next Tuesday with another meetup on uh, Agile Online Facilitation with Enrico himself. Um, so see you there. To the next Bye. one. Bye. Thank you. Thank bye you. Bye. bye.